to support from fuel poverty action. And we have from the beginning tried to counter the lie that fracking is going to bring bills down and that we have to choose between cheap energy, which is fossil fuel energy, and this, our survival as a human race on this planet. We don't have to make that choice. Fracking would not bring the bills down. Even the people who are conducting it have had to admit that, but they keep trying to put it about. Fracking would not bring the bills down. What will bring the bills down is renewable energy. Yeah. And yet the government, which has been supporting fracking, has been trashing the solar industry, has refused to allow onshore wind, which is the cheapest form of energy. And the reason they won't allow it, they say, is because local populations don't like wind turbines. Now, how does it matter if some people don't like wind turbines, but if you don't like fracking in your local community, they will impose it willy-nilly, whatever the local population say. They have been supporting this industry forever. And what they're interested in, what they're backed by, is the oil and gas industry. And that is not only in this country, that's international, that's in the United States. And we can see another aspect of that with something else that Fuel Poverty Action is involved in. Because ever since the Grenfell fire, the Grenfell survivors and other people have been fighting for the safety of people who are in other tower blocks, who are clad in flammable materials, combustible materials, what are those, what is that cladding made of? Plastic. Where does the plastic come from? Oil. In EOS. Import. Huge tank loads from Pennsylvania. Take it to Scotland, to Grangeville, and, and uh, crack it into plastic. They want outlets for their plastic, and they're putting it on houses where people can burn to death. Now we're having a demonstration again in the 17th of October and I hope some of you will be able to come and also make that connection because it's a demonstration demanding that the government reclad buildings, social housing buildings which they've said they will put some money towards but not enough and they're dragging their feet on it and private buildings where leaseholders who may not be rich people you know, they might own a home but they might not be able to pay the heating bill where leaseholders are being asked for tens of thousands of pounds to take the cladding off and put new cladding on their buildings. And protection from the cold for people when the cladding's off. Because that cladding covers insulation. And when you take that away, people were freezing last winter. And many of them have more winters to face without insulation in freezing cold, damp homes. And there's nothing being offered to many of them to even cover the cost of the heating bills or to make sure that they and their children and elderly people and people who are ill, people with cancer, people who need the heat, that people can actually stay warm. So we hope you'll come at one o'clock outside the Ministry for Housing, Communities and Local Government, that's down in Victoria, on the 17th of October. It's a Wednesday lunchtime, followed by a meeting in the House of Commons, which uh, Alison Stoke with John, uh, John McDonald's uh, 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 Alison Stoker has uh, arranged for us, uh, which will be from three to five. And I do hope some of you will be able to come for that. But we will, in any case, keep coming to the fracking demonstrations as we always have done from the beginning as Fuel Poverty Action and keep supporting this fight until it wins because none of us can afford fracking or other fossil fuels. Thank you. Okay, that's uh, Ruth London from Fuel Poverty Action and uh, Occupy.